Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton and welcome to my painting class today. We're going to do an oil painting today. Um, I'm in the process of sketching the, uh, the scene on my canvas. I have 11 by 14 canvas with a gray tint on it and uh, have my palette lined up and ready to go. I've got a few more marks to make here and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started. I'll zoom in so you can maybe see a little bit of the sketch and uh, I'll finish up the sketch and uh, we'll get started. Um, got this water, it's a nice winter scene that's got uh, a lot of snow and uh, some bushes and some pine trees back here and a few mountains in the distance so um, see if we can uh, make this into a beautiful painting um, and uh, I think that's possible to see that. It's a little light, but uh, I'll zoom in a little bit more and you can maybe see that. Okay, um, we're going to use our standard palette of colors and uh, get this thing centered just about right. No, nope, that's not exactly right. I want to get that right. Let's There we go. Okay, I think we're ready now. Okay, got the sketch done and uh, we're ready to go. The painting we're painting is uh, going to be used for my uh, oil painting class, which is coming up on January 16th. And it's going to be another snow scene, so uh, let's get going. I'm going to start here with a little bit of, with this big uh, one-inch one-inch landscape brush. We have the standard uh, uh, brushes we use for our oil painting class: a one-inch landscape brush. We have a number three fan. We have a, a script liner. I have a filbert. I have a bright, and I have a, a painting knife that we use. Um, I should go over the colors again briefly just so everybody knows what color of paints we're using. I have titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, I've added an ultramarine violet, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. So those are the colors and uh, as soon as I get myself a paper towel here to work with, I will be ready to go. So I'm going to take the, put a little light, light sky in this painting, very light blue, taking just a little of the uh, phthalo blue and mixing a very light color here um, for the sky. And it doesn't have very big, very much sky in it actually. It's fairly light. I got enough paint in the brush to make it work, however, and uh, maybe even put a touch of oil in here. That's a little bit of linseed oil will help it spread nicer. Something like this. Blue over here, slightly different color. We want to run these together at the top of this painting. A lot of blue there, way too much blue. So we'll just touch in some of this. Little dark blue spots here and there. I'll leave it look like some clouds in some places. Right above the mountains in the distance. Getting a little bit darker than I want. I actually picked up way too much blue in this brush. Let's see if I can get that out.
got these colors pretty close together on the palette so you can see them easily, but it also makes it easy to pick up the wrong color. Okay, something like this. Not taking a long time on this sky, just put in a little bit here and there. Just enough to make it look real. Put a few low-lying clouds. Um, let that brush soak a little bit. I'm going to get my filbert brush and just add some white with a light, light touch of uh, ochre in it. Uh, not much. It's going to turn green. That's not what I, I want to happen up there, but I want to get just a little bit of color in this sky right here. So I'm using this filbert to put in a little layer of some red, a little bit of uh, a little bit of ochre, although ochre is probably not the best color to use in, in this blue area. But if I get some nice brush marks up here that look like clouds, I'll just leave it alone. Something like that. And uh, go back and get my big old landscape brush. Boy, I'm getting a big, big amount of phthalo blue in that brush, really. Really messed it up a little bit. Okay, something like this. We'll just sort of soften it very lightly across there. Okay, that's good. All right, so much for the sky. Not much to it. We'll just leave it at that. Come back and get my filbert. put some trees back here in the distance. I'm going to use a little bit of this um, ultramarine violet I've got. See if I can get a interesting lavender color. Put some white in it to see what color I have. Probably a little too red. Put a little more blue in there and uh, see if I can get a nice color for these distant trees back here, top of this mountain. So I'm taking this filbert and sort of making some vertical strokes back here. trees that are going to stick up in front. Something like this. Paint between where the trees are going to go. canvas is covered with a uh, coating of gray gesso so that it uh, 
a sort of a medium or a uh, I guess a value of about five for the canvas. Over here on the right, let me get a little more blue in this. Put a little black in it maybe and darken it down just a little down here at the bottom. Where this comes up against this other set of mountains that are a little closer. So these are pretty far off in the distance. They're not very easy to see. I'm going to take a very light mixture of this ultramarine violet. Ultramarine is a pretty potent color as well, but I'm going to take a color a little bit darker than the sky. Sort of run it in here. Another set of mountains in the distance back there. I want it to be just a little bit lighter than what's in front of it. some progress here. Very soft. Okay. This area over here is going to have just a little more and darken it up just a little because it is in front of those mountains behind it. So this will help it stand out just a little. Again, I'm running it right down to the top of this mountain that's in front of it. Over here, we're going to put in some other colors. I think I'm going to maybe add just a little brown to this to change the color a little bit. This I'm using dark sienna here. Let's see if we can get a little bit different color in this part of the mountain over here. Still trying to paint around where these pine trees are going to go in here so we can see the mountain through the pine trees. like that. Over here I'm going to get a bit more brown in this on the right side. Maybe a touch of ochre. I'll we'll see how that looks. And over in here somewhere we're going to have some other colors that blue in there, we're going to end up mixing it up with making green out of it, which I'm not crazy about, but we'll darken it up with a little darker brown, Van Dyke brown. So we're getting nothing pretty well filled in back there. Bring a little of that dark over here so it doesn't look like it's out of place in the distance. 
a few reds in there, a few of this. And maybe even a few over here in some spots. Can have a few places here. So hopefully that's going to look like some good mountains in the distance. I'll see what the camera is picking up. It looks like it's showing pretty well. For now, come back and get me a little bit of this uh, dark sienna and ochre. And in this area here, I'm going to put in some sort of a reddish color, lighten it up a little bit. Not reddish, but uh, look like some trees or bushes or it sort of has this more orange color to it. Something like this in this area. We need to have Right back here, I want to be one of the areas that the eye goes to, so put in a few colors here that might catch the eye and pull it back that way. Canvas is dry, there's no uh, liquid white on this canvas, uh, it's just raw canvas with only gesso over it. Okay, now. All right, I think I've got enough there and enough here. Make sure I've got a few spots that look like there's some trees and things back on those mountains. I don't want it to look like it's snow, necessarily. Okay, now, yeah, let's change the color a little bit, add some reds and some ochres over here. We'll sort of balance this thing out a little bit. All right. Now, it's time to wash out this filbert and start working on some some white. And the white is going to have just a little bit of dark in it. Not very much. But I don't want it to be stark white, I want it to be slightly off-white. So I'm using a little bit of midnight black with titanium white. I get myself a little mixture here of off-white. And this is our snow coming in back here. Got to be careful when I mix it up with the paint that's on the canvas. They'll pick up that picks up that color that's there and pulls it down in there, which I don't particularly want, so I have to watch it. Go back and clean the brush a little bit. Load more paint in. some trees and uh, small pine trees back here in the distance. But I want to get just a little of this snow on. If 
first. This color is has just a little bit of midnight black in with titanium and it's making it sort of a off off white. And I can come back and put highlights on top of that and make it look more like snow highlights anyway of the snow. Leaving room for some trees back there. I'm going to put in some more of the snow here. We'll be putting in some shadows from the pine trees in a moment. But I haven't put the pine trees in yet. Um, I want to have some snow in here among these pine trees. Like this and around the bottom of them. And actually uh, pulling some of that uh, gray from the uh, underpainting, the, the gray gesso that's on the canvas. When I scrub it, take the paint out, what's left is some of the gray canvas underneath. So I'm getting some good snow on there. Some shadows in it. Trying to make the brush strokes go left to right, right to left, sort of as the, the lay of the land. So we end up with the strokes helping to tell the story of what this is back there. Even up here I want them to sort of come right to left like this. Left to right, sorry. Okay. That's good for that stage. Putting some more shadows and highlights and stuff in there after a bit. But I've got the rough markings I want in here. Okay. Now, See if we can get some colors that represent some of these pine trees back in the distance. I've got some ochre, maybe a little bit of sap green, but don't want it to be too green. More on the brown side. Add some purple to it, or some blue. We start getting a mixture of greens from dark to light and I'm still using my handy dandy filbert um, so I'm going to come in here and see if I can push in some pine trees back here in the distance I'm pushing up in this brush
Bring some dark colors in the bottom here. Some similar colors that will be dark under these pine trees on the left. So I'm going to push out push out and up. left side to be dark. The sun is coming from the right hand side. So shadows are going to be on the left side of these trees. In all cases, we're going to have darks across here that represent shadows. Okay, that's one pine tree. Let me see if I can get another one in there that's a slightly different color. A little bit this ultraviolet with yellow ochre and see what it does. Hmm, different color. I'm pushing out away from the center as if I'm pushing these these uh Pine needles away from the trunk of the tree, if you will. So as they come forward, they should get a little darker. That's the idea. change my brush and go get my fan brush now for a few minutes and see if I can make some even slightly different types of trees with my fan brush which is typically the way the only brush I would use for this but changing the style a little bit a little bit away from pure Bob Ross technique and Bob Ross brushes um, but these things still make very nice pine trees because you can actually flare them out on the edges with these this fan brush put some darks in here to cover up some of the canvas and let's see get a little more green in there in some places different yellow colors with the blue and even with black we get olive colors so there's a good nice pine tree
quite a few more pine trees over here as well, so I'm going to change the color again. Put a little more, maybe a little lizard in it, see if I can get a little bit orange, more orange color in some spots. Maybe there's a one back here. Actually, this fan brush, if you get a very nice edge on it, make a very nice top on a tree. Like that. And come back and get some more greens, pick up a few more of this. So the technique with the fan brush is different than the technique with the uh, filbert. So I'm thinking of this pretty much as a big blob of trees back here. Which is a good way to think about it. Try not to get too many specific trees just come in and put a lot of branches and a lot of foliage back here. So it's making a nice looking backdrop. Using my blues, Prussian blue with yellow ochre. I'm using a little of this ultramarine violet with ochre. And um, just trying to cover this up with some nice different colors of paint so I don't have all one um, color back there. a little bit. Maybe get another color of blue in there. Get a little of that phthalo blue and see what that does in here. Changes the color. Definitely lighter. So if we have enough differentiation in color, we can definitely make these things look like separate trees back there. If they all look the same value or all look about the same color, you're not going to get the differentiation in these pine trees. Get some browns in there. I think I want I have to have some trunks in these things. So let's get some browns, dark browns, and put a trunk or two in here like this. Um, Start showing there is some trees in that landscape that have trunks on them instead of they're just bushy. All of this violet. Uh, we got a lot of dark lights and darks back in here to kind of mix it up. gets too light, we'll darken it up. If it gets too dark, we'll lighten it up. But we want to have nice variegated colors back here. So the dark blue, like uh, Prussian blue or phthalo blue, will give us some nice dark areas at the bottom or inside in the shadows help make these things stand out. So I'm starting to show the way the land lays here by making some strokes come down this way. These trees are sort of all just on the slope of the ground that's got a lot of snow on it. Get me some darks. If you put some darks in here, start 
identifying some specific bushes or parts of trees. I want this to have a, an area that sort of goes back in into the woods, sort of take the eye back there. I'm trying to have a couple of places where we have that. And uh, so by using these combinations of colors, you can usually get some. There's another old pine tree right there. Pop him in, move it down, put some bushes on the bottom. Okay, so I'm getting some interesting looking shapes there. And it's looking like a woods back in the distance, that there's some room you can dry and walk back in there um, on that snow. Let's see what I got going over here, if I can put some more darks under the bottom of some of these. There we go, it'll help, help a little bit over here the fan brush. Okay. All right. So I'll mix some snow in over here and we'll bring down some more snow on this right side. All right, how are we doing for time? I think we're managing pretty well. Um, okay, take out my fan brush, put it in the thinner and let it be soaking. Um, I think I want to put in some, see if I can get some good, uh, effects with this snow back there in the distance. Um, again, I want just a little bit of grayness, but not too much. Take some white touch of black. This area on the right side is going to be snow. Snow that wraps around the, the water. I have a nice stream that runs through here. It's got a little ice on it, but it's mostly water. We're going to have some reflections in it. dark sienna and a little of my bright red and put a little white in it and see if I can get a color that's sort of a pinkish color and see if we can put some of these bushes that are in this area right here. Just 
sort of kind of lay on top of the snow. So that was dark sienna, a little bit of bright red, some white. And we can change that color to the orange side if we want to add a little yellow to it. But right now I'm going to just stop it right there, leave it come out like this. And we'll touch that up in a little bit. And hit a few of these back here, soften them up a little bit, add a little color to them. dark in there. Let's pull that out if we can. Probably not quite halfway done, maybe close. Try to make an interesting line across the top of these bushes so they don't look square, they don't look round. It's called a melodic line. Bushes are over here. Okay. And while we're at it, let's put just a little dark underneath there. some shadows in there. If I can get a dark color here. Soften the bottoms of some of these. soft. Okay.
Go back to my fan brush here for a moment and see if we can get some more uh, good snow color there. If I can get uh, here maybe with the white okay good progress good progress get some more white on here cover this up several protrusions out here that I'm going to put some shadows on and make it look like they're piles of snow that are built up. Okay, that looks pretty good. How much more snow can I put on here? Get just a little of this thinner and maybe we can cover some more sections of this. I'm just using titanium white. I put just a touch of my uh, medium in it, my oil medium, like a linseed oil, to get it to flow a little easier. But when it flows, it also doesn't put on, leave on quite as much paint. So I end up having to go back over this again with some more paint. But that's not a problem. <laughs> titanium white in one of these paintings. I'm just going to put a good little underpainting of white down here right now. Well, this is could be called negative painting. I'm painting around where the river goes or this stream. I'm not painting the stream, but when I get done, you can see the stream. So this is just a good undercoat. I'll come back. Got a lot more work to do on this, but at least. We've got this sort of laid in, and I think we can see the stream here. We can see the 
trees in the distance, the mountains in the far distance, <coughs> trees in the middle ground, and as we put our water and reflections in here, this will really stand out. Uh, we're going to put some nice shadows uh, on the uh, snow after a bit. But I think this is looking pretty good right now for what I wanted. Okay, now we have some bushes that have some sort of orange in them, I guess that is, a little orange, reddish orange, something like a burnt sienna almost, which color we have is a dark sienna, but Sort of in this area here, we have some more bushes. And they connect over here. Myself just a little midnight black to add with that so I can Gray it down in some spots and sort of blend it together. Yeah, these shadows will help let us know where the sun's coming from. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe just a little dark in here again to give us some definition. If we get it too dark, we'll be in trouble. Fan brush, a little bit of midnight black, kind of blending it in, flicking the brush upward. go across here and helps make things look more three-dimensional put a dark couple three values in there at least two values and usually three makes it really look three-dimensional that little bright spot is bothering me a little bit I'm going to dull it down over here and put a few more dark things in. Just helps round those bushes out if you put a little bit of a shadow on one side, it makes them look fuller, thicker, and more realistic. Okay. All right.
few more strings of scrub grass or something that's kind of sitting here that's not all the way covered with snow. Okay. Okay. I think now is a good time to probably stop my camera, reset it, and uh, change the videotape, and uh, come back on the other side. I'll zoom in just a bit and let you see some of the detail. Okay, we will stop for now and be back in a few moments. We're back. I have a new videotape in, and Got me a little more titanium white, and uh, I think I'm ready to finish this painting off. We're, uh, we've gone about an hour, so uh, we have probably less than an hour to go, I would say. Um, some nice details in this painting that we can add, but uh, we're pretty close. So, we're uh, at the point where I just finished putting in some of the snow with, uh, on the... Uh, the banks here and uh, I'm gonna have to go over it now with another coating because we need more paint on here what I put on was thinned down somewhat with thinner and with um, some liquid white and I put it on fairly thin to just get a base coat on so we'll Go back and put in a little more of this white. Just put it in over what's there. I'm actually not graying it down any right now because I have put the gray in it already. I'll leave some of that show through and then I'll come back and put some more shadows in as we finish this up. Over here, a lot of nice places for snow sharp edges on the top of this bank. Just using fan brush, pure titanium white, not putting anything else in it. Just adding a nice white layer here. Okay. Back here I want to have just a little bit of rough snow in some spots and we'll be putting some shadows under there in a little bit to make it look like a, uh, a bank that's got some depth. We're going to round these things so they show their three-dimensionality as well because the snow is piled up over here. Okay, so I think I've got all my shadows in back there. Pretty much got done what I wanted to get done in the background. Let me see if there's a few things I can touch up here. Maybe just it's a little bit too bright and too distinct. A few spots here could be slightly blended a little more, but not too bad. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. Thing I didn't do in that in those trees in the background is put in some uh, some trunks. One way to do that is to take our uh, script liner and get some thinner in the brush and rub it on the palette and get a nice uh, coating of paint on it that kind of looks like ink almost. Um, roll it around, get a nice coating on there and let's put a few trunks in here and 
some areas like this. So the detail helps a little bit. I'm going to put a bit of dark brown in some spots to uh, kind of darken it up in some areas. And that little extra detail helps really make these trees in the distance stand out. Looks like it's a real forest back there. You have to get enough on your brush to make it dark, however. I mean, I can be able to see some of that in the camera. I don't know. It may be too light, but you can see it here. Over here, I want on the left side, I want to put in some tr trunks if I can. Put a few little things in here like this. tops on these trees to make them look like they've got some really sharp points up there. All right, that's a lot of detail. I don't want to do too much, but I do want it to stand out a little bit. So you can see there are real trunks and real trees back there. that goes a long way. All right, stop. Now I think I want to start working a little bit on this water. I'm going to use my filbert brush. See if we can get a nice dark blue-green color here that we can use for the water. The water in a snow scene many times, and this is no exception, is um, dark, darker than the snow around it. Sometimes it looks even very black. So in this area here we're going to touch in some really dark water. So I'm using Midnight Black, a little bit of my Prussian Blue, pulled a little bit of yellow ochre in it to give it a little bit of green color, but I want it to be fairly dark. Try some of this purple, even. maybe this uh, Ultra Purple will give it a interesting color. So I'm just using horizontal strokes. dark. Changing the color up, get a little more green in it, maybe.
So I've got a nice dark color brewing here. Take the dark colors and put in Not using any medium or linseed oil or anything on this. I'm just putting this straight on the canvas. Using a filbert brush, paints are using the two blues, Prussian blue, Thalo blue, midnight black. Getting a little more lighter blue, bringing in some some of the sky color here, almost picking up the phthalo blue and white that I had earlier with the sky, pulling it into this area. So I have a lot of blue, green, black, dark colors, sort of lightening it up as I come forward. And I'm actually going to change the color even to show some some of these some of this um, reddish color over here because I'm going to have some more bushes um, on the left over here that are going to be reflecting in it. So I'm going to change this color even a little more. Blue, white down here in the front. And mix up some Okay, that's pretty much the underpainting of the water. And I think it looks like water going back into the distance. Um, back there in the back, I want to have just a little more, a few more spots back here to sort of taper it off a little bit, make it look like it goes into nothing back here, but it does keep going. Actually had some some rocks with some um, sort of an orangey color. A couple of rocks laying out here in this area. If I can get something that looks like a rock, some white in it. See what that does. Nope, it's not uh, standing out enough. So, more white. Starting to get something that looks like a might be a 
rock out there on the end. Here we have something similar. Keep picking up that paint underneath, which makes it even uh, harder to get it the right color because the dark blue green is coming off of the water. So we just keep adding more white with the alizarin with this mixture. Some dark sienna on the brush. There we go. Start getting another rock out there. I start using this color, this sort of gray color, for some shadows. I can also use it for rocks. And, but as I put this sort of vertical streaks on here, it starts looking like there's some depth in that snow. Give myself a little bit of this blue that was in the sky. Lighten it up. Some spots. It's kind of touching and scumbling over this right now. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the brush. Kind of letting the brush pull off what it, or the canvas pull off what it will. Keeping soft edges. I can come back over that and put some soft edges of white over that as well, which I'm probably going to do in a few minutes. Got a little of this purple here. This ultramarine purple has a nice color to it. So we're going to put some of it in, in here in some areas. We're going to start making some things that look like little cracks in the snow or indentations in the snow. Got to keep wiping the brush off because I keep getting, <clears throat> picking up paint that's on the canvas. So as we look at some of this, we're going to put in some of these some areas that look like they're Creases or just a little bit of this um, ultramarine. up I'm trying to make this look like there's some sort of a, uh, a crack of some kind in that snow. Um, I hope that's what it's looking like. Over here we got several areas that are sort of have this lavender color on it. If I take this lavender and white, ultramarine violet and white, get a good amount on my brush, I can sort of put in some interesting shadows here. If I can keep from pulling that dark
water up into this. We will have some highlight areas that have pure snow on them, but I don't want to overdo it with the So I'm just really fine-tuning some of these areas now with the brush to make it look like there's spots of snow that have sort of built up, have some places that uh, where it would look natural to be piled up. Top of here we might have some snow. keep this brush as clean as possible but it does pick up a lot of paint from underneath over here we've got a lot of this lavender Okay, <clears throat> we have some blue that sort of made its way into this. I guess it's a, uh, down here we got some areas that look like they might be Keep these edges soft as possible with this bristle brush. Um, These details may be hard to see on the camera. I don't know. It's hard for me to tell what it looks like on the camera. But <clears throat> I do want to come in and put in some of this, some of these reflections. Taking a lighter color. back bank a little bit back here not too much just in some areas like this like that some 
interesting. Areas like this. white and put a pull it back. We're just making some marks in the snow to make it look like there's, so I don't have this big area that's all one shade of white. Could be rocks hidden under there or whatever. sitting over here that might have some snow on top of it, except that's not the color. Still not the color. Come on, let's get some white. <clears throat> get enough white on the brush, we can just kind of let it pick off the white. Turn the brush over. Something like that. Just blur that up a little bit. Come back and add in a few more. Make those areas look a little icy, I guess, if I put a glaze over them horizontally. reflections getting some areas that look like there's some deep deep snow around there little pockets of snow Put some more dark down here maybe to make it look just a little bit I have three values we can actually get a nice I can put in here. Got 
these bushes on this side that kind of go in this area. That might be about it. A little bit of this color over here. Pull that together, a few more shadows. This area that had some bushes, I used dark sienna, a little alizarin, and a little bright red, and a little white, and had these interesting bushes. Let's see if I got the same color again in this area right here. of stippling and get some dark at the bottom of this so we make them sort of blend with the snow some darker in there. And some spots. Maybe there's a few rocky things and some break this up another one of these areas I've got a lot of same color going on <clears throat> okay down here I want to put in some of this reflection a little bit if I can a little bit too red stop is the question no when to stop still have a little bit of area in here that looks sort of non the script We've got not much going on in there let's put in a little crack of some kind in the snow like that bring another one down like this okay This filbert brush is coming in really handy. And just some highlights here and there for
soften this up a lot. Just barely running the brush over it very lightly. this off very softly. There we go. Alright. I think maybe I'm going to stop and let that go. I notice these bushes all sort of point the same way. They look like they're sort of little independent things there. Let me break them up just a little. Some darkness on the back sides. Okay. things down here I'm just messing around now I should stop that edge a little better edge nice little variegated edge there okay A little more depth here, if I can. Even put a little more fogginess back here. Using titanium white instead of going over this area very lightly. I did say stop more than once. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. I hope you like this painting and I hope you're uh, going to be able to attend my class on January 16th. And if not, I'll see you next time I can and I hope you enjoy this painting and give it a try. Thank you. So long.